Hello, my name is Amanda Lynn. I work for Blue Marble Geographics. Today I'm going to show you how to manually edit point clouds in the Path Profile Viewer in Global Mapper. For today's example, I'm going to look at manually classifying the vegetation around this pipe here in this point cloud from a customer of ours, SSMC. Now, because the features in the point cloud are so closely intertwined together, the vegetation in this pipe, this I'll show you in the 3D viewer here, is a little bit difficult for Global Mapper's automatic point cloud classification tools to differentiate. So we need to manually classify them. It is, it's also difficult to do in the 2D and 3D view because selecting specific points can be very challenging, as you'll see if I grab the digitizer tool here and I try to select just a few of the vegetation points in the 3D viewer we can see in the 2D view that it has also selected all of the points behind it. So this is where the path profile tool comes in handy, where we can look at slices of the data to classify them a bit more in small chunks at a time. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the path profile tool here, and I'm going to draw a line through the area that I would like to manually classify, and that will open up in the path profile viewer here. I'll dock that on the side so we can follow along in the 2D view as well. Now the default setting will show us the entire data set from a perpendicular perspective. And we can zoom in and out and we can select points from here, but let's break it in, into even smaller chunks by looking at it from an additional perpendicular perspective. Now we'll enable that from the settings tool up here, the little mountain with a wrench icon on it. We'll go to the per perpendicular parallel profile tab and you can enable either the perpendicular profiles or the parallel profiles, essentially the same thing from different perspectives. But for today, I'm going to choose to display the series of uh, perpendicular profiles. And we can see that the profile length default is 50 meters. This gear is not 50 meters. <laughs> so I'm going to change it to three. And this is about as far away from the original profile line as you would like to draw the line from, as you would like to see the points. We only want to see about three meters on either side of that line. There are additional settings here that determine how far away these individual slices of data are. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at the default and click OK so we can see the individual slices of data here. So this pink section in the 2D view is what we're looking at in the path profile view. To navigate through these individual, individual slices, you can use the arrow keys here, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to look at the individual slices as well. If you find that you're looking at too wide of a slice of data, you can come to data display and change the setting here. I've already changed it ahead of time from the default of 2.5, this is gonna help narrow down that slice even more. If you're looking at less data and you're more able to accurately select the data that you're working with. So now that we're able to visualize the data, we need to select the points and then apply a classification to them. And the path profile tool has additional selection tools up here in this top bar. There's of course these two here that are also available in the 2D view where you can draw a square. Let me zoom in on some vegetation here. Of course, you can see as I zoom in, the path profile tool in the 2D view reflects that as well. So you can always see what type of, uh, what part of the data you're looking at. But I can select a square of data using that tool. I can hit escape to get rid of the selection or I can use this clear selection button here. There's also the select LiDAR by polygon, which gives you a bit more flexibility in um, clicking to select and then right click to end the selection. But I think most importantly in the path profile tool or most usefully are these next two options to select all LiDAR above a line that I draw or all LiDAR below a line that I draw. So if I use LiDAR above the line, let's say for example, I want to select all of this wheel here without getting any of the vegetation. And I can just do this, right click to end and all of those points are selected. And then similarly with select below line, since I know that all of these points here are vegetation, I can wipe these out lickety clip Lickety split and come back later to more manually do the other small points. Now that I have the points selected, I want to apply the classification to them. There are a few different ways to do this. Some of the more common class manual classification options are included as buttons here, both in the path profile tool and the 2D viewer. You do the same thing, but basically you would click on one of these classifications to apply it. You would click yes, and that classification would be applied. I hit escape and we can see the color there. So you can see through the change of color that the classification has been applied. But if you would like to apply some points, some classification that isn't one of the defaults, there are a couple of different ways to do that. One is to grab the digitizer tool, enabling some of the editing settings in uh, the 2D view. You 
you'd right click in the 2D view and hit edit selected features. Now any of the settings that you edit from this menu will be applied to all of the selected points. Most, uh, most significantly, the classification, you can choose from any of the classifications to apply here. But if you're doing this for a long time, for a large swath of data, maybe that's a bit of a longer workflow. Maybe you want to do something uh, a little bit quicker. One way to do that is to set up a favorites key or a shortcut key. You can do that from the favorites toolbar up here. You click the drop down and click save, set up favorite shortcut keys. And from this menu, you can choose from basically any of the functionalities of Global Mapper. I'm going to scroll down to LiDAR Classify Selected. And then you can tell Global Mapper which key combination you would like to use to apply this selection. So if I hit F2 and Control, anytime I hit F2 and Control in Global Mapper, it will apply this road classification to the selected point. And you'll notice from the menu here that it only provides a few classification options, a few class options. It's pulling from the ones that have been uh, pre-specified or predetermined. So if you would like to create new classifications that are unique to your point cloud, you can do that from the configuration menu here. Go down to LiDAR, and you can scroll down and find one of these empty slots. We, we call them reserved for ASPRS definition. And you can right click on it and choose to set the class name, color, and subclassification as you will. And using that, you can apply additional classifications. So, this is a little bit more about how to manually classify point clouds in Global Mapper. To learn more, visit our website at bluemarblegeo.com. And if you have any technical questions, please consult our technical support team at geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com.